Hi everyone, this week we're going to be looking at a restoration project that I took on. Uh, this is a Windows 98 computer. I uh, ended up getting it in a lot of, I want to say, nine computers and got it down to three that were salvageable and the rest were pretty much just junk for parts. This was able to turn on once I removed the RAM. I did have one bad stick, two were working, and booted into Windows 2000, which was password locked. But the computer was in pretty rough shape overall, so I did end up doing a teardown, get it cleaned up, make it look a little better, and install Windows 98 onto it. As you can see, the case is pretty nasty. I'm not sure if these were stored either in a basement or outside. When I picked them up, they were in the guy's front lawn, but he claimed that they weren't stored outside, though the, some of the contents did make it look like they were. We're going to go ahead and get this torn down, get it cleaned up a bit, and get some new parts in it. Anything that's broken is going to need to be replaced. And we'll just basically get the dust out of it right now. Of course, get the thermal paste replaced and see if we can get this working a little bit better. We'll start with the CPU heatsink, remove that, and clean off the very old dry thermal paste. Get the dust out of the fan, and just start with fresh thermal paste to give us the best chance of working in the future. And there's the ball of dust wrapped in a heat sink and a fan. Get that cleaned off and it doesn't look like new, but it looks quite a bit better. Should be a bit quieter as well. And I'm just going to continue tearing down, I'm going to remove all the cards from the PCI slots, get them cleaned up, they're pretty dusty as well. I uh, won't be using this Ethernet card in the future, so that can just stay out, but we will need the video and audio cards, as this does not have onboard audio or video. And it also has a USB expansion, which is good to have because there are only two USB ports on the motherboard and they're right next to each other so it's hard to plug in even just a mouse and keyboard if the connectors are slightly larger than normal so we'll go ahead and get these cleaned up and reinstalled With the cards reinstalled, I'm also going to replace the CMOS battery. This one did seem to be working, but who knows how old it is. They're pretty cheap and easy to replace, so we'll get that done as well. And we'll get these hard drives out of here. It did have 160 gigabyte and 140 gigabyte. Uh, I tried various configurations, plugging in one or the other. Unfortunately, they, they just wouldn't turn back on to Windows 2000. I kept saying that the build was corrupt or this or that wasn't working so I did end up completely disassembling the computer to make sure I got every last bit of dust out. Got the motherboard removed so I can get the dust off of that as well as the rear and just give the case in general a good cleanup. There's dust in every nook and cranny as you can imagine over the years that this has been running. The buttons were also fairly stuck so I did remove them ended up having to file down the power button just because it had been, I assume, stabbed with a knife a lot of times to try to get it to move in and out. Quick file down and it's working better, but it is still sticking. It looks like there is glue and a zip tie on the back. Don't really know why that was put in there. It stopped it from operating, so I did go ahead and cut the zip tie off and remove the excess hot glue, and the button is working well. And then we'll move on to the reset button, which of course is also sticking, very dirty. Uh, we just removed it, cleaned it up, and got it to operate normally again.
One nice thing about this ancient case is it does have a completely removable motherboard tray. So the motherboard is removable with just two screws. You can slide out the whole tray. I did take it off just to get the dust in between the motherboard and the tray itself cleaned off. And then we'll get this completely reassembled again and try to test it out and see if we can get any kind of operating system up and running. I also removed the ugly silver five and a quarter inch drive bay covers and found these off-white, of course, still not the correct off-white, but a little bit closer to time period correct and installed those just to make it look a little bit better on the front. And now we'll turn it on and see if we can get any kind of boot up. I did struggle with this quite a bit. I'm used to building slightly newer computers, at least as old as Windows XP is a little bit easier. Um, it ended up being a very simple thing that I was missing in the BIOS. I needed to set the hard drive settings before trying to install Windows 98. Once I did that, it was a pretty easy installation from there. Just a normal install, get everything working, and then spend yeah, about a day getting the drivers set up to make everything work well. After having this project sit idle for weeks, this is a happy sign to see the hard drive finally formatting. I was able to boot off of the Windows 98 CD and get the hard drive formatted. Windows 98 files copied over and then start setting it up. Very exciting day. My hours of hard work paid off and I was finally greeted with the Windows 98 startup screen. Look at that nostalgic old screen splashing in to welcome you to Windows 98 and show you how to use the new operating system for Windows 98. During the process of working on this lot, I ended up picking up another lot of really old computer parts and found these fans new in box. Figured I'd go ahead and install them. They're the right size and time period correct. Didn't have any case fans, probably doesn't need them, but I had them, so why not get them installed? The front fan has an easy toolless installation. You just snap it into the cage and then snap the cage into the case and you can plug it in either to a Molex connector with the adapter or directly onto the motherboard. I started out using the Molex but then found after that there was a spare port on the motherboard so both fans are plugged directly onto the motherboard's power. I ran into one issue where every time I would shut down the computer it wouldn't fully shut down so I'd have to manually power it down but this was easily fixed with a patch. I also installed the latest service pack just to make sure that everything was working, get the best USB functionality, and make sure the computer can do as much as it's capable of. Naturally, I had to set the bubbles background, and here's just a view of the rear of the case cleaned up as best as possible. And just a view of the front with the cards installed, hard drive installed, and floppy drive installed into the correct bay. I was able to, with a bit of cleaning and modification, get that working in the slot that it's designed to go in. And let's play some Midtown Madness. The wavy line going across the screen isn't visible in person, uh, it's just an issue with getting the frame correct with the camera. Um, once I ended up turning it to 30 frames per second, it worked fine. I also wanted to have a compact flash available for this build, so I 3D printed an adapter so it would fit into that spare floppy drive bay. It wasn't the perfect adapter, so it did have to get glued into place, but it was able to get it formatted. And now we have a hard drive of 40 gigabytes as well as a 4 gigabyte compact flash. You can play games off of that as well. And here's the USB back installed. I ended up going with a different sound card. The first one was a little bit hard to get drivers working properly. 
I uh, tried a bunch of different installs and it wasn't working, so I went with one that I had on hand and it does work fine. Here's just a picture of the specs. We have a whopping 256 megabytes of RAM and here's the rear of the case cleaned up as well. I did go ahead and purchase some new PCI bracket slot covers just so they'd be nice and shiny and give the case just a general cleanup overall. There's the 3D printed compact flash adapter, floppy drive in the correct slot, and functional buttons. And here's the inside of the case, cleaned up as best as it can be. Again, with IDE cables, it's kind of tough to hide them, but they're tucked away as best as they could be. Here's Monster Truck Madness, running well. Um, at first it wasn't working, but I had the settings turned all the way up to the maximum. This isn't a crazy maxed out build or anything, it's just a functional Windows 98 build. Um, with the settings turned down to low, it runs just fine, the sound is working great, and was able to play through this game as much as I wanted to. Overall, this was a fun build, a uh, bit of a challenge compared to what I'm normally used to building. I typically build newer PCs, but this was definitely a fun challenge and something I'd try again. Thank you for watching.